You even got the exfoliator for your feet. You just rub them on the wood. Oh, baby, smooth feet. That's darn near perfect. It's like, it's almost like too nice to go to work. Well, good morning, guys. Today we're doing a special project. It's a project that's been overlooked for far too long, and it's something that we really need down here, and it's an outdoor shower. So today I'm going to show you how to build the world's simplest outdoor shower. And then we're gonna throw in a little bit of extras to make it fancy. Let's get started. We first have to level the base to ensure our IBC tote is perfectly level because we want it to drain. So what we use is a rake and we raked out the dirt where it was high and we put it to where it was low in order to give us a nice level surface. In order to build the simplest outdoor shower, you first gotta start with a couple of things. And a couple of things are these things. These are IBC totes. And when you're thinking, what does IBC stand for? It's Intermediate Bulk Carrier. You can find these in most industrial spaces or, um, like places that do industrial cooking, because ideally you wanna find a couple of food grade IBC totes. Now, the reason why you don't wanna do the alternative is sometimes there's some nasty stuff in them and uh, you don't really wanna be bathing in something that's, that's got, you know, I don't know, arsenic or something, some sort of weird chemical in it. Um, these are, um, I would say in the middle of uh, food grade, between food grade and not food grade. Uh, it's the only ones I could find. So uh, yeah, you could find them on Marketplace, on Facebook, or uh, I guess Craigslist or Kijiji. I've seen them as low as $25 all the way up to $150. It depends on the cleanliness and I guess if they're new or not, but there is, they're, they're not that hard to find. If you keep your eyes open, sometimes you find them on the side of the road, but sometimes those are nasty, you know, use motor oil or something like that in them. So you want to find the cleanest tote you can find. The guy's not bad for cleanliness on the inside. I'm not sure we'll store it in it, but it's uh, not terrible. Don just give it a little wipe and uh, clean as a whistle. The next step is actually putting the other bin on top of this thing because we can't crawl into this little tote because it's a little too short. So we have to remove these support braces, which is sitting on top. This happens to be a Torx 30 bit and uh, it's kind of a unique bit, but you probably have it squirreled away somewhere in your drawer of bits. It's rarely used because it's so big, but you just gotta unscrew them. They come out that easily. And that gives you a nice little spare. You know what? That's a towel holder right there. I'm gonna save that bit. All right, so we gotta repeat it on the other side and then we can put the top on. In order to cut the top of the bin, we ended up using a cordless angle grinder and we used a, an abrasive disc in order to, uh, to cut it. Now, what we did with the bottom piece is we actually cut it on the flattest most part of the IBC tote because we want the top clamshell of the IBC tote to sit on the inside in order to retain all our water once it's put together. Well, it's already feeling like a shower. I cut my door open uh, with the, uh, the closest upright that I could find that would give me enough space to crawl in and crawl out of it. By crawl in and crawl out, I mean walk in and walk out of it because this thing is gonna be luxurious when it's done. The, um, use the angle grinder with the, uh, just the cutting disc on it and uh, then I polish it off so you don't get any sharp barbs. And what this little chunk here will allow us to do later on is to put a uh, door, uh, jam essentially to allow us to put a door on it and uh yeah i think it's uh it's nice and spacious you can see already how big it is we're already like you could sit down in your shower lots of room for activities in this shower So what we've done is we've screwed in the bottom tote to the rail and then we took a heat gun and we actually uh, stretched out this guy so it's actually sitting on the outside because the next clamshell that we're going to put on the IBC tote is going to sit inside this thing so we don't have water leaking on the outside. So we needed to stretch this as far out as we could all the way around. We did the same thing on this corner. As you can see it sits out past so the other tote should just slide right in and give us a nice lap joint.
one on that one side. Well, now that we have the main structure of the shower stall built, as you can see, it's quite roomy in here. I kinda, I kinda like how bright it is. So I think I'm gonna probably not put anything on the ceiling and allow me to actually have a lot of light come into the ceiling. And uh, what's also neat is this little convenient hole for my shower head. And I kinda wanna add a little bit of style here. So I'm gonna add probably some sort of a cookie in the ceiling here to house my rain head. That'll be kinda neat. And then perhaps, perhaps a shower wand for when you want to just wash your feet or something like that down below. And uh, I think the other thing is you probably don't want to be standing on plastic a lot. So maybe like a wooden grate down below to get yourself off of the main kind of plasticky area. Maybe some shelves. I don't know. I'm just thinking, just thinking out loud, figuring what are you, what are you guys thinking? And then we got to clad it because as cool as these IVC totes look, they don't look very nice. They're very, I guess, utilitarian. They're very cage-like structure with plastic on them. But uh, they're definitely strong. Like this is probably doubles as a, uh, some sort of a emergency shelter in the event of, uh, you know, a crazy rain or even like, you know, a tree's gonna fall on you. Run in here and you'll be safe because you're in the cage or a shark, land sharks come out and uh, you need kind of a shark cage. This thing will double as that as well or, you know, crazy trout come out of the pond and decide to uh, attack you, you just go in this, uh, in this cage. It's pretty neat. With all this craziness, I almost forgot to feed the fish. So, well, you feed the fish. Fish. Rainbow trout sitting in there. And Linden's fish hatchery, they're doing really well. As you can see, they're, they're piranha-like. Look at them go. There's some really big ones there. You feed them what looks like little, um, looks like little tiny dog food and it floats and they come to the top. It smells a lot like dog food. That, uh, that stuff's actually from Linden's Trout Hatchery and New Dundee and that's where the fish came from as well. And uh, there's about a hundred in this little pond here. And uh, as you can see them, See them there? There, this little guy here. There you go. I'll give you some food right there. This guy. They're elusive little trout. Let's go, let's go right there. Let's see if we can get there in there. We just added a uh, pond conditioner in from Nature's Pond Care, and it's uh, designed to clean up the water, naturally occurring enzymes that uh, eat um, that eat all of the the bad stuff that's in the pond to give us nice clear water. As you can see that. That fish there is, uh, well, look how clear the water is. It's been in there for about, uh, I don't know, about four or five days now. It usually takes about two weeks to kick in, but as you can see, those trout are doing really well and uh, the water is super clear. I don't always get down here soon enough in the morning to feed them. Ideally, you wanna feed your trout early in the morning. And uh, I've got actually a, a little build Plan for that guy. It's an automatic deer feeder uh, from Cabela's Bass Pro Shops and I'm going to rig it up on a timer and it's going to sprinkle out food early in the morning because I, I told that trout like to eat early morning kind of as the sun comes up. It's another build project if you guys want to, you know, you guys got to stick around in order to see those projects. But as you can see the trout doing fine. Look at them. Water looks great. Aeration system looks great. Everything looks great. But we're building the shower, so let's get back to doing that. We've got to head up to the mill because we want to mill some planks for our outdoor cladding and uh, get everything else set up. Because again, this is a uh, this is our quick shower build with things we have on hand. Well, I didn't have to go far to find one. There happens to be a nice looking one right here, and it's exactly seven feet long, which is what I need. And uh, it's been sitting there for a long time, so it's probably nice and dry. It's also got really wide planks. It'll make short work of making the siding for that thing. 
I got some other stuff to pick from, but this is the nicest one right here. That's perfect. Look at the size of it. Wait, Frank, is that a good log? Is that a good log, Frankie? Yes. I'm gonna pull it out. Pull it out. Mush. No? Is there a bunny in there? I think there's a bunny in there. You think there's a bunny? I think. Right, there we go we got uh, quite a bit of wood as you guys can see there is uh, a bunch of live edge wood and a bunch of square edge stuff that uh, I'm going to show you how we can use that most efficiently and make it look awesome there was a little bit of rot in that log so I did lose actually quite a bit of it and uh, but you know what I think I got pretty good a pretty good yield on that this is what didn't make the cut. It's uh, it a little rotten, a little dry rot there. So it was good that I used that log because otherwise it would be wasted. It just kind of kept going and rotted the entire thing. Well, we almost got the door all buttoned up. I ran out of battery, but uh, as you guys can see, I've got the, uh, it's a tongue groove cedar that I've had laying around for a really long time. It's, uh, it's ideal for kind of doing doors because it's really, really, really light and it's got the groove in the tongue. So you have like complete privacy and it locks itself together and kind of gives itself a little bit of rigidity from racking from side to side. And uh, did I mention it's light? That's the most thing. And um, the thing with cedar is that it's, uh, it's naturally water resistant. So that's kind of why I want to use it on the door system. So that's, that's pretty much, well, if I, if, I, if I stay right there with the camera, it looks like the door's all done. I only got a couple boards left to do. I've got it just sitting there charging. Hopefully I can get that that, uh, that buttoned up. And uh, I've got my threshold piece on, which uh, is uh, is naturally kind of drips out. Does it need to drip out or drip in? It's, it's, it's a shower at the end of the day. And uh, I got my trim on and my corner posts on, which are uh, just cedar branches. They kind of match the, the sauna, which is right here. And uh, yeah, moving right along. So the plan now is to install this guy while we're waiting for our battery charge. This is the Gasland, and it's a, it's a on-demand propane water heater, which I've never I've never tried before. So I'm I'm curious to try it. Actually, it was on sale at uh, Princess Auto uh, last year. I bought it, and I was like, this is this is in the in the works. We are going to put an outdoor shower in. Uh, but yeah, so I want to install this guy. I'm gonna install this on this back wall over here just to, uh, so you can set it. I guess you gotta set it and then you hop in and then you got uh, basically hot water on demand, which is crazy cool. So when you wanna, well, crazy hot rather. And we've got it hooked up to the um, rainwater collection system at the top of the hill. I'll show you that a little bit later. Uh, but first we're gonna tie this in. We got actually a pipe. We got our pipe, you can see it right here. And it's actually, that's hooked up to our system up at the top of the hill and it's gravity fed down here as well as it's got a little RV pump which gives it a little bit of assistance. So uh, let's, uh, let's plumb this guy in and uh, yeah, let's see if we can get it running. We're up at the main cabin on the hill and this is where I get the rainwater. It comes off the roof over there and it gets collected in a cistern and I'll show you that just in one moment but I first wanted to bring your attention to this little stump here. This is a cedar stump that was cut down a while ago and it was left relatively high and uh, I got a special project for this thing. Primarily uh, little stepping stones right in front so you get your feet out of the mud and uh, uh, fancy kind of a backdrop for a shower head so I'm gonna cut this guy off but uh, before I do that, I'm going to actually show you a tour of the rainwater collection system. There is a video on this thing if you want to look back in the, uh, in the playlist to actually find it. But what I did was actually, I channeled out a, uh, it's a four inch ABS pipe and I cut a slot in it. So it fits tight against the, uh, the roof and it actually keeps the debris out of the pipe. And then it collects it along this little channel here and then goes down this pipe here and then it gets collected in this water tote and in turn gets uh, pumped down and gravity fed all the way down 
to the shower, which is down at the lower level by the pond, which this system's uh, probably about three years old now, and it works adequately. In the rainy season, we collect all the water. We get about a thousand, there's a thousand liters in here, a thousand gallons. Anyways, there's a lot of water in here. It's a uh, three cubic meter water tote, the same as that I built the shower out of, and uh, it stores our water for uh, future use. All right, so I took the time to sand the cookie that I cut. As you can see, it's relatively large. It is cedar and it's kind of a little moist, so I can't actually seal it with anything right now. But that's the good thing about cedar is that it can uh, be very water resistant. I'm not just trying to peel all the uh, little fur off of the edge, get the fur out of the crack, because nobody likes fur in the crack here. You gotta just kind of get it out there. So the idea is to take a shower head chunk and then poke it through the center of it and then mount your shower head to that and that's going to be in the ceiling so that gives us kind of a nice backdrop as opposed to a plastic tote and uh yeah so this is all easy easy peasy We've got our flooring grate all set up. This is going to allow us to stand not in our own filth. It's gonna keep us off the ground and all the dirt and debris is going to fall through the cracks and out the drain. And it doubles as, uh, it's gonna be nice on the feet too because it's all cedar, it's gonna have an aromatic smell. Now all we do is get it in the shower and see if it fits. Have a look at that. There. That's perfect. I like it. I'm gonna look it. It's got a door handle, and everything. We just gotta get the shower head hooked up and see if it actually works. What do you think so far, Don? Perfect size for me. Isn't it? Like yeah. it's got. Well, you got shoes on. You don't. You don't shoe, shower shoes on. You'll be another like inch lower. Yeah. So, so perfect. Yeah. It's, it's like awesome. a. It's like a sun shower right now. You just sit there and you look at the sun. Or a phone box. A phone. A phone like a telephone uh, yeah. booth. Yeah, yeah, the old phone boxes. Do the phone box, is that a thing? I guess in England they call them phone boxes. Okay, so it's a, it's a phone box, telephone, telephone booth. Telephone booth, yes. I don't think they exist anymore, Don. Possibly. You can, you should re reach up there. Can you grab the phone? You can get a no. Hello. No, it's, I think the, we, we moved it. We moved yeah. the shower head. So we just got to get the shower head up inside there and uh, we're all set. But like, look at that. Like it gets, I mean, you can see the dirt. The dirt's down, well, you can't actually see it. It's perfect, you never have to clean your shower. Because the dirt just hides behind it. Perfect. Look at that for fanciness. We got her all mounted up. And uh, as you can see, the thing still pivots. Normally rain heads will sit flat on a surface and you can't get away from them. This one here, you can pivot it because it's got a little bit of room. And it also adds like depth between the shower head, which I like, it's kind of cool. I think this particular cookie is actually the right size for this thing. You can always get a bigger one depending on how big your shower is, but that's pretty nifty. So that's the business end at the top and we can just screw our shower head nozzle on the end of that and then we just have a cap. We could actually put a different cap on the top of that guy. See this thing kicking around, and I think this will work, actually work good as a ventilation in, in the top of the shower. It'll also work as a cap so rainwater doesn't get in. Kind of looks like if I wore it as a hat, it'd be the Muffin Man. All right, let's see if it works. I uh, actually put a shutoff valve in line because as I think it turns out, this is supposed to be designed to be on a or, uh, like a, a garden hose fitting. So I put a inline shutoff so I can just turn it on like this. So we got our water going and then we turn this on. So it turns the gas on 
Look at that. It started right away. 16, 17, 18 degrees, 20 degrees. What do we want our water temperature to be? 31 Celsius, 32 Celsius. That's cool. That's, that's amazing. I'm gonna go check it. Okay, so what we've done is we've adjusted it. We can adjust the water uh, amount right here. So we've adjusted to about that. And uh, we're getting consistent, constant flow at 41 degrees Celsius. And then you can adjust your gas, which is, uh, we got two, two flames and we've set it to winter, which I guess it adds a little bit more flame. You can determine whether or not you want summer water or winter water. I guess that's the incoming water, but my water is really cold coming in because it's really cold overnight. And then you look here, we've got our water coming in, which is exciting. And you're not standing in a puddle of your own juices. Everything is draining as expected. Oh, that's pretty neat. And I installed a bench. That's not really a bench. It's more of a, uh, where you put your shampoo and whatnot and soaps. That is really nice. And I've always wanted a ponder rock in my shower. So what I've done is I've found a rock and now we just got to lift it in the shower. Now by ponder rock, I mean, I want a place I can sit and ponder, kind of like have shower thoughts. Yeah. Oh. And if you don't have a ponder rock, you can always use a ponder stump. That's Don's idea was a ponder stump. And I was like, why don't we lift a heavy rock? Why is it so heavy? It's like this thing, twisting motion just going down right there. Oh. Okay. I think I can get it from there. Oh, ponder rock. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a tour of the off-grid shower. We're going to start off with the workhorse of this thing and it's propane. This thing is powered by a 20 pound propane tank. And uh, what's really convenient about that is it's pretty much on demand. So when you want hot water, you turn it on. You don't have to fiddle with firewood or anything like that. We got this Gasland on demand hot water heater. I guess it's not a hot water heater. It's a water heater. Cause if we had hot water, we wouldn't need a heater. It's a water heater. And uh, we got all the controls there. We've got our freshwater collection system from our cistern up on the hill. It comes down here, feeds up on this thing. And then we have another pipe that goes over the top and it feeds our rain head, which is in our shower. We built our shower out of IBC totes and then we clad it with some pine we had kicking around and then some cedar inlay in the door. And uh, we finished it off on the inside with our trusty little shelf here for all our showering doohickeys and knickknacks. And we've got a wooden floor to keep us out of the water at the base. And we've got our pondering stone or our thinking rock for our shower thoughts. And if we look all the way in here, we have our fancy shower head, which is adjustable. And uh, the reason for that is because why not? Let's just make it fancy if we can. It's leaking on me. Well, there you have it. That's our fabulous off-grid shower. Oh yeah. Off-grid shower time. It's nice. Singing in the rain. I'm singing in the rain. Oh, this is so nice. It's so warm in here. This is like the most luxurious shower ever. It's almost it's a smidge too hot. Oh, even got the exfoliator for your feet. You just rub them on the wood. Oh, baby, smooth feet. I can't get enough soap on my head. Did I get enough soap on my head? It's not as, not as comical as I thought it was gonna be. Well guys, as you can see, our shower is working awesome. Actually, hang on. Well guys, as you can see, our shower is working awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Enjoy me on the next one. I'm gonna enjoy my hot shower. Is it still running? Yep. Got 41. We all live in a yellow submarine. We all live in a yellow submarine. That's darn near perfect. Whew. It's like, it's almost like too nice to go to work. Are you guys still out there? What the heck? All right, you can shut her off. Oh. No, not the water, the uh, camera.